how do I get more power on the surf? Tip number one. When you talk about power, you'll notice all the pros, when they start accelerating, the racket goes in there automatically and then they have that automatic snap and pronation. But your racket will never flow behind you if you don't have the right starting position. And one way to sort that out is to make sure when you're getting ready to serve, your strings are facing down, down, and then power. So the only way you can get from, from there to here is with your strings closed. Champions, thanks for watching. If you want to become part of my VIP team and become a master at this great game of tennis, click the link in my bio and I'll see you inside. I want to talk to you about a hidden secret that I tell all my players about and it's really like a pot of gold in your hands if you know how to use it. My players that understand this, it just helps them so much. Some players never understand this and my hope is that players would really understand how simple this is but how much it can help you. For me, it helped me win so many tournaments. It's simply cutting the net out of the game and it sounds crazy but if you understand the mindset of if I do nothing else right now but just cut the net out of the game and that's all I focus on, if I do that, I win, your winning percentage it just shoots up. What it does is it keeps you calm. If you're struggling with consistency, missing balls you don't want to, it takes all of that away and you are laser focused on that one thing. It's a great thing to use under pressure. Another thing I always tell my players is you just draw another small court. So you make everything smaller. That's where your court starts all the way through to here. These are the two singles lines for you. And then on top of that, the magic potion is you add another net and that's your court. So you have to hit over both nets and you have to hit inside areas. And that's all you focus on. If you're struggling in a match under pressure, that's all you focus on. Try it out, just see what happens. Okay, Luki, we're gonna do a quick drill just to prepare for for nationals, you're gonna play a lot of matches. So we're gonna go 15 ball side to side, you gotta get 15 in. If you miss, it's minus three and we keep going. The reason why it's so good is in a match, it's all about how quickly you can bounce back. So if you miss four in a row, if you miss one and then you spiral out of control, you can lose all your points immediately. But if you can bounce back after one miss, then you can finish with 15 easier. So it teaches you not to go down that spiral of missing five in a row, you, you, can't, you can't afford it. One, two, three, again, three, three, keep in there. Four, nice, five, get back to two, now bounce back. Yes, three. Guy just out, back to zero. Three points will let you. Two, that's it, find a way. Guy, back to zero, bounce to zero. One, six to it. Put bounce back, two, three, yes. Four, good. Nice thing, keep on the back end. Five, bonus point, just mine without. Seven, beautiful. Eight, now keep it steady, now keep it steady. Yes, nine, ten, good look. Stay with me, seven, that's good. Bounce back, eight. Okay, good point, nine. Okay, seven, come on. Yes, eight. Lovely, nine, ten, let's go. Eleven, beautiful. Twelve, okay. Thirteen, okay. Fourteen, one more. Okay, Luki, we're gonna do a quick drill just to prepare you for, for nationals. You're gonna play a lot of matches. So we're gonna go 15 ball side to side. You gotta get 15 in. If you miss, it's minus three and we keep going. The reason why it's so good is in a match, it's all about how quickly you can bounce back. So if you miss four in a row, if you miss one and then you spiral out of control, you can lose all your points immediately. But if you can bounce back after one miss, then you can finish with 15 easier. So it teaches you not to go down that spiral of missing five in a row. You, you, can't, you can't afford it. One, two, again, three, what you there? Four, nice, five. Okay, back to two, now bounce back. Yes, three. Okay, just out. Back to zero. Every point missed will let you. Two, that's it, find a way. Okay, back to zero, bounce to zero. One, stick to it. Put it bounce back, two, three, yes. Four, good. Nice thing, keep on the back end. Five, bonus point, just mine without. Seven, beautiful. Eight, now keep it steady, now keep it steady. Yes, nine, ten, good look. Stay with me, seven, that's good. Bounce back, eight. Okay, good point, nine. Okay, seven, come on. Yes, eight. Lovely, nine, ten, let's go. Eleven, beautiful. Twelve, okay. Thirteen, okay. Fourteen, one more. What to do with that low ball, that low awkward ball? I know many players are struggling with the low ball. The first thing, first problem players make, the ball comes low and then they try and stick with their normal big swing. You need to understand the low ball is a different shot. You have to swing differently. If you're gonna have a low ball and try and have a massive swing, chances are you're not gonna be able to lift it. You have to shorten your swing, that's enough, and then from there you lift. If your normal swing is like this, the low ball swing is something like this. Because the ball is low, for you to be able to lift it, you need to come from down there. If you're coming from up here, you can't lift it. Very important, low ball, low swing, low turn. Um, I want you to toss the ball and catch it. Okay, let's go again. Okay, so now just get ready, put your left arm up. Okay, that ball, that ball was passing somewhere here. I want it extreme. If you had to leave it, it needs to fall in here. That's how close it must be to you. Yeah, but that's much better though. It must feel like it's close to you because then you can work the ball. Close to you. Yes. Now kick that thing. It's right there with you. Yes. Okay. And again. Look, that's a very, very good second serve. It's miles, miles better. 
Champions, thanks for watching. If you want to become part of my VIP team and become a master at this great game of tennis, click the link in my bio and I'll see you inside. There we go. And now I want you to hit the ball. Like when you look at the ball, here's the ball. Imagine yourself hitting the ball up and to the right. Nothing across. Get it to the guy's backhand. Okay, again. It's jumping though. Champions, thanks for watching. If you want to become part of my VIP team and become a master at this great game of tennis, click the link in my bio and I'll see you inside. Um, I want you to toss the ball and catch it. Okay, let's go again. Okay, so now just get ready, put your left arm up. Okay, that ball, that ball was passing somewhere here. I want it extreme. If you had to leave it, it needs to fall in here. That's how close it must be to you. Yeah, but that's much better though. It must feel like it's close to you because then you can work the ball. Close to you, yes. Now kick that thing. It's right there with you. Yes. Okay, and again. Look, that's a very, very good second serve. It's miles, miles better. Champions, thanks for watching. If you want to become part of my VIP team and become a master at this great game of tennis, click the link in my bio and I'll see you inside. So many well-meaning players out there feel like they want to be a, a positive tennis player and they, and they think they are. But the problem is they're using it the wrong way. All right, You will have players, and I, and I speak to my players about this all the time, they would say, watch me, I'm never going to serve another double fault. Or watch me, for the next half an hour, I'm not going to miss another short ball. That's great, your intention is right, but you're using your mind against you. The thing is, the best example I always use is, if you're thinking about buying a new car, or there's a car you like, or you know of someone looking for a specific car that they want to drive, and all of a sudden on the roads, when you're driving, you're seeing that car everywhere. I'm sure it's happened to a lot of you. The reason is your mind is open to it, and your mind is looking for it. In the same way, if you say I'm not going to serve another double fault, all you're seeing is double fault. So you're going to get more of it. If you're saying I'm not going to miss another short ball, all you're seeing is missing a short ball. So pretty simple, your intention is right, but change it to I always make my second serve when I need it. Under pressure, my second serve always goes in. When I get a short ball in matches, I always nail it into the corners. My short ball is my weapon. So your intention is good, your mind is your weapon, but you have to understand your mind works in images, pictures, whatever you say will give you a picture. So sometimes you think you're being positive, but the picture you're getting is not positive. Guys, I go into depth in my masterclass and I explain to you how your mind is a secret weapon. If you know how to use it, nothing can stop you. If you want to get into the VIP team, link in the description. Okay, now last little tip. Can you just have the ball a little bit closer to you in terms of like more over your head? So your ball toss is in front, which is not bad. I teach that. But for you, because you need a little bit more upward. Behind you. Not behind you, but like if you had to leave it, it had to fall on your head. Must feel a bit behind you. Yes, boy. How's that? Okay, so that's your toss. Lower, a little bit behind you, and you just go up and over. It's a massive kick. Can we have three on the other side? Then I'm happy. Slightly higher, massive kick though. But remember, if it comes closer to you, you can work it more. Proud of you, champ. Now get this one to the back end. I'm happy with that. That's good. Rather miss it there for now. Champions, thanks for watching. If you want to become part of my VIP team and become a master at this great game of tennis, click the link in my bio and I'll see you inside. I always tell my players, think about a, a four-in topspin champ. After contact point, if you're not going to go up, there's no brush. So right now, what you're doing is on your kick serve, you're hitting it straight down. It's impossible, eh? Same thing here. After contact point, the racket needs to be higher than the ball. The only way you can do that is if you wait for the ball to drop, then up. If you can't take too high, there's no space to go up, right? Like, let it, let it come down even more. Yes. So also think about this, if the ball toss is lower, under pressure it's easier. The higher the ball toss, the more risky it is. Uh, that's why when the wind blows, you also go very low ball toss. If you want more serves in, just go lower, and it will also help you with your kick. Champions, thanks for watching. If you want to become part of my VIP team and become a master at this great game of tennis, click the link in my bio, and I'll see you inside. Nice. 
we have to show you something that's very, very important, and that's why his serve is so good. You have to take a look at his grip. You see there, there's Bevel 1, there's Bevel 2. He's a little bit to the left of Continental, and this is why this is why he has a relaxed wrist. I see way too many players, they feel like they have a serve grip, but they, they're heading on to Eastern. It's almost impossible to get that snap, that pronation, that racket drop, and that's why his grip is so smooth. Yes! Champions, thanks for watching. If you want to become part of my VIP team and become a master at this great game of tennis, click the link in my bio and I'll see you inside. Nice. So, two things that you guys will recognize is he's got an extreme fluent motion. So there's no pauses. It's very, very smooth. Using your legs very well and your timing is ideal. Are you trying to pronate? Right now. No, you're not. Yeah. So that's what I always try and tell you guys. He's not forcing the pronation, but because his grip is right, it's nice and sharp, and because his biomechanics are so good, pronation happens automatically. Beautiful. So a lot of my players, you've noticed, they do a pinpoint serve. He serves like me, he does platform, and he's so used to it, he still gets a lot of momentum up and forward because he bends his legs. Wow. Can I give you a quick tip? Great tennis. So you're getting nice and low on your, on your backhand, which is brilliant. But because you're thinking about the point, the next ball coming already, you're hitting it already coming up. So without realizing it, you, you're getting a little bit less than you could. So just try this. So low legs, everything the same. See if you can follow the ball just a little bit more forward, then release. There's enough time. Yes. Oh, much heavier. Can't even get it back. Okay, well you won, good job. One thing I want you to try out, you're hitting from the baseline, right? Every single ball, you were hitting close stance, okay? You were hitting close stance. Close stance is not bad, but if you look at the modern game, if you want to have more swing, they play open stance from the back. So let's use today's session. Why don't you go 80% open stance? Load on the outside leg. Especially on the deep one, look at that pickup. Yes, get used to it. Nice. Much better forehand. Down the line forehand. For you to get the, the forehand down the line, try the inside out tip. So which means your racket has to come from inside and then swing out. If you don't go from inside and you go straight from there around the ball, almost always it will go cross court. So I'm going from inside, carrying the ball out, and that's gonna give me that beautiful down the line shot. Thanks for watching, follow for more. See you for my next one.